Okay, good morning, everyone. I'm very really glad that we have our guest today, Dr. Mohammed Fatke bin Hamdan, is coming to us, to us from Tunisia. He's an assistant professor and the head of the Isotope Hydrology and Geochemistry Unit at the National Center for Nuclear Sciences and Technology. Uh, his area of research is uh, coastal aquifers and seawater intrusion problems, as well as, as application of isotope hydrology in groundwater resources management. He's visiting the US for one year as a photo scholar, and he's making a few rounds in the US giving lectures. So without further ado, uh, Dr. Benjamin Mode will talk to us today about the application of isotope hydrology and tomorrow we'll talk about coastal uh, salt water Thank you, Mr. Kadi. First of all, I, I would like to thank the Fulbright Program and uh, the University of Hawaii, especially Professor Kadi, Lexman, and Rieta, for their invitation, allowing to me to uh, present this talk about uh, the application of uh, isotope hydrology in groundwater resource management in the frame of the Fulbright program, especially the Outreach Lecturing Fund. First of all, I would like to present the situation of Tunisia. Tunisia is a small country located in extreme North Africa, and it's considered as a freshwater scarcity country. Most of experts consider a thousand cubic meters per capita and per year is water shortage warning line. In Tunisia, it's less than 400 cubic meters in 2011. And also, Tunisia is a country of physical water scarcity, which means water resource development is approaching the sustainable limits. And in the global water street indicator for the major basin, this map shows the water basin in Tunisia are considered Overexploited. Here, this uh, tab shows that uh, Tunisia, uh, in comparison with neighbor and Arabic country, it's one of the poorest uh, water uh, availability per capita and per year, uh, in comparison with the, the neighbors and the other Arab countries. Some general information about Tunisia. Uh, the total area is about 164,000 square kilometer. The population it's almost 11 million, and uh, the pluvial water resource uh, it's uh, estimated to be uh, 36 billion cubic meter, giving an average of 225 millimeter per year. In Tunisia, we have uh, six or seven uh, uh, class of climate from the. Uh, to, uh, from the humid in the extreme north, uh, we, we have about uh, 1,850 millimeter of uh, rain per year. Uh, after that, we have the the subhumid with the, the green dark green color. After that, we have the lower uh, subhumid, the semi-arid, the arid, and in the extreme north, in extreme south, we have a desertic climate. Topography of uh, the country it's uh, considered uh, no high uh, topography. Uh, the, the average uh, uh, altitude is about 700 meters. The high mountains are located in the west uh, west part in the country, close to the Algerian border, and uh, close to the sea we have a, a very lower uh, plain. The global water resources are estimated at uh, 4 billion and 850 million of cu cubic meters composed by surface water about 2,700 uh, million cubic meters which uh, we have 2,170 million of, uh, can be mobilized the groundwater resources are estimated to be uh, 2,125 million cubic meters composed by shallow aquifer 745 and confined aquifer, uh, 1,380 million of cubic meter, which we have uh, 650 are non-renewable uh, 
aquifer. In that degree, we have the uh, uh, important uh, water resources. In uh, the other green, uh, middle water resources, and in red, limited water resources. The dam, most of the dam are located in the north part of the country because of the rainfall. The hydrologic catchment uh, is composed by seven uh, uh, hydrographic catchments. The, uh, the major dam is uh, the biggest one, giving about 1,000 cubic meters to this uh, uh, surface water uh, distribution. And uh, in the extreme north, it's uh, close to 1,000 million cubic meters. And uh, in Tunisia, we have only one big uh, river taking place from Algeria and uh, uh, to the uh, Mediterranean Sea. And uh, for the other wedges are not perennial, perennial wedges. It's uh, 55 and 45 for the uh, groundwater resource. Uh, the, the big dams are located in, in the north, and we have a big uh, network of distribution of, uh, of, of uh, water to the other uh, places of the country where uh, we observe uh, a drought from, from year to, to year. The combined use of isotope and uh, chemistry help to uh, understand the groundwater resource ma management, uh, the establishment of piezometric salinity and nitrites maps with the time series of a piezometric level and uh, TDS, help to understand the location of the vulnerable zones of, of over-exploitation, salinization and pollution, and also for the estimation of fraction of seawater. The ionic ratio helps to understand the seawater fresh water uh, mixing, the origin and mechanism of salinization, and localization of vulnerable zone to seawater intrusion. The stable isotope of the water molecule oxygen 18 and deuterium with the ratio of oxygen 18 and chloride have an idea about uh, the groundwater recharge and origin, the interconnection between aquifers and the preferential zone of recharge and seawater intrusion. The radioactive isotopes, especially tritium for recent uh, recharge and carbon-14 for, for old recharge, give uh, uh, the groundwater age dating and the infiltration velocity, and also the estimation of the renewal and recharge rates. In fact, the stable isotopes in hydrology take advantage of the natural variation of isotopes in water to, stu to study the hydrologic system. Each type of water has a specific fingerprint of isotope composition to this uh, plot of uh, relation between deuterium and oxygen-18. For those samples located near the seawater, and uh, aligned on the seawater line, uh, they are affected by seawater intrusion. For the samples located in this area, they are, they are affected by uh, surface evaporation. And uh, the sample located between the global meteoric water line and the local meteoric water line of isotope composition, they are received a big amount of uh, recharge from rainwater. The last uh, uh, group is composed by uh, sample uh, uh, are from, far from the weighted average of uh, rainwater station, and they are very depleted uh, with comparison with seawater uh, composition, and uh, uh, they are uh, represent a fingerprint of old water. Of all the stable uh, isotopes uh, 
have uh, an isotope fractionation because of this uh, natural uh, water cycle. The, the composition is uh, different from the seawater. We, we observe the standard mean ocean water. This uh, isotope composition will be different in cloud and after the precipitation uh, to the groundwater and to the surface water. And this uh, isotope fractionation depends uh, uh, with uh, different factor like the altitude, the, the continental continentality or uh, the latitude and also the temperature of, uh, of water. Here we have uh, uh, the map of uh, the global network for isotope pre precipitation established by the International Atomic Energy Agency. And in Tunisia we have uh, two stations for the measurement of, of the composition of uh, water uh, isotopes. And I can see here, I think in, in Hawaii you have also uh, a station for the measurement of the, this composition of isotope in precipitation. The stable isotope of uh, oxygen 18, uh, of water, uh, oxygen 18 and deuterium. Uh, here uh, I am presenting a result of a uh, uh, coastal aquifer located in the northeast part of the country. It's the Estero Coastal Aquifer. As we can see in this uh, plot, we have, uh, we have two groups of water. The first uh, group is composed by sample. Uh, from the shallow aquifer, the quaternary shallow aquifer, and uh, the sample of uh, this uh, group are located between the global meteoric water line and uh, the local meteoric water line of uh, the Tunis Carthage rain station. And uh, this, uh, in this group, the water is very close to the weighted average composition of uh, uh, Tunis Carthage rain station. The second group. It's composed by uh, uh, by sample aligned on the mixing line of seawater. They are affected by seawater intrusion, and uh, and the the other sample located on this evaporation line, they are affected by the phenomenon of evaporation. The Miocene and Eocene uh, and Oligocene deep aquifer are composed by water uh, far from the average. Uh, composition of rainwater and uh, they are uh, they have a fingerprint characteristic of old groundwater. The radioactive isotope uh, the tritium is uh, used uh, as an indicator of uh, recent recharge. In fact uh, the tritium undergo radioactive decay. The period of the tritium is about uh, 12 Point three years, and uh, the maximum of the um, content observed in tritium was uh, in '64, after the nuclear bomb and uh, uh, thermonuclear uh, testing uh, realized by uh, by uh, United uh, Kingdom, Russia, United States, and France, and this uh, this high amount. Uh, is decreasing uh, uh, until the lower days, and actually the composition of uh, tritium in precipitation is about one, tri one tritium unit. And this uh, tritium was used for the uh, distinguish, uh, to distinguish the recent water uh, of the, uh, of the uh, old water. The map of the distribution of uh, tritium in uh, the east coast, uh, coast aquifer uh, and uh, the El Hawariya aquifer, located in the, the region of the Carbon, in, in the eastern part of Tunisia, yeah. show that in the shallow aquifer, the new quaternary aquifer, and the quaternary aquifer, we have a high content of tritium, indicating uh, recent water and uh, post nuclear water. And uh, we also observed uh, a low content of tritium. In, in some place, that means the aquifer is recharged by upflow from the deep aquifer. <coughs> in, 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 uh, we also observe a high content of tritium near the rivers, indicating a recharge from rainwater, and the low content of tritium in deep water, it's a fingerprint of all, all, all water. 
the carbon-14 uh, is used as uh, an indicator of uh, old recharge. In fact, the carbon-14 is uh, formed in the high atmosphere by the interaction between uh, cosmic ray and the, the nitrogen. And the carbon-14 is formed, and uh, this carbon-14, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a region uh, of the, the shallow aquifer or the deep aquifer in form of uh, CO2. So for the recent uh, age, in the shallow aquifer, we have a big amount of uh, carbon-14, and after the, the decay, we observe this amount of carbon-14, it's, uh, it's decreasing and giving a nash uh, more higher for the for the water depending of the of the root of the of the water in the underground also the carbon 14 can be used for the estimation of flow velocity by the establishment of the relationship between carbon 14 age and distance of the water in the underground the map of the distribution of carbon 14 in the eastern coast Aquifer show that the carbon 14 13 confirm the hydrogeographic information, hydrogeologic information. Uh, that means uh, in the shallow aquifer we have a recent uh, age, and in the deep aquifer we have old age of uh, carbon uh, 14. The high activity of carbon 14 in the pleopotary aquifer is located near the river, confirming. The stable isotope uh, result that means we have a bigger uh, recharge near the river and we have also a high recent recharge. The low activity in the Miocene, in the, in the Miocene aquifer and located in this region and uh, the Oligocene in this region show that the, uh, the very old water fingerprint give, given by the carbon-14 measurement. The flow velocity was measured to be between 0.3 to 2 meter per year. For the El uh, uh, aquifer, uh, in the shallow aquifer we have uh, recent water uh, with high carbon-14 activity uh, close to zero, uh, close to 100% of modern carbon. For the Pliocene uh, confined aquifer and deep also, uh, we have uh, the age, corrected age, uh, varying from 100 to uh, 16,000 years according to the depth and the underground route. We have the same uh, estimation of, uh, of uh, uh, water velocity, it's about 0 0.2 to 2.5 uh, meter per, per year. The piezometric uh, information with uh, the study of the composition of uh, uh, stable and radioactive isotope give an idea about the localization of recharge and overexploitation zone. In the eastern coast, we have a, a recharge zone uh, located in this area. And for the uh, overexploitation, we have this, uh, this area in, in red. In fact, for the recharge, we have a piezoelectric uh, level uh, higher than uh, it's positive piezoelectric level, and we have uh, a rise in piezoelectric level in the time series. And the isotope uh, composition of uh, the water molecule are close to the water uh, weighted average isotope composition of the rain station of Tunis Carthage, and we have a high amount of tritium and also high activity of carbon-14. For the over-exploitation area, we have a negative piezometric level with a de continuous decrease uh, of, this, uh, of, of the piezometry in the, in the time series. For this uh, aquifer uh, of the uh, oriental coast, the, in uh, the inertia zone is located in the south uh, part of the aquifer. It's uh, in the south of Wet Ulidi, where we have uh, an interconnection between the deep aquifer and uh, the shallow aquifer. That means in this region, 
uh, the, sh the deep aquifer uh, flow water from uh, the deep aquifer to the shallow aquifer. For El Hawaii region, we have the, uh, the recharge zone located in the north. It's uh, the uh, replenishment, replenishment uh, zone by rainwater. And the exploitation zone are uh, located near the coast. And uh, in El Hawaii uh, coastal aquifer, the inertia, inertia zone, it's very limited due to the small surface of the aquifer and also for the thickness of the aquifer, it's about <coughs> 30 meters. Uh, the conclusion for these uh, two aquifers in terms of uh, groundwater recharge management, we have uh, the monitoring of the piezometry with the hydrologic, uh, hydrogeologic information with results of uh, stable isotopes and tritium, given uh, information about uh, this uh, aquifer of the pleo-quaternary and quaternary aquifer. They are recharged by, by rainwater and uh, recent uh, water as a post-nuclear water and uh, in the last decades and also we have uh, uh, an upflow up from the deep to the uh, shallow aquifer. So we have a fast infiltration in some place we have also seawater intrusion. The carbon-14 uh, groundwater dating give information valuable information in the pleo quaternary shallow aquifer and the quaternary aquifer. We have high activity in carbon-14, that means uh, recent age uh, of, wa of water. In the deep aquifer of the Oligocene, Miocene, and Pliocene, we have uh, low activity, that means we have a uh, 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 very old uh, age. Uh, and the age uh, vary from uh, 0 to 16,000 years, and uh, the renewal rate was estimated, uh, estimated at uh, 0 0.3 uh, per year, and the recharge rate was estimated to be uh, 12 millimeter per year. And uh, in this uh, in this region, uh, we have. Uh, we established uh, uh, the location of the preferential zone of the recharge and uh, the water authority authorized farmers and uh, uh, to implement uh, new uh, borehole uh, or uh, deep wells but uh, for the zone where we have over exploitation they establish uh, a safe and forbidden area of exploitation of uh, uh, groundwater here we have the the map of the, this forbidden and uh, safe area. Today we have 25, 23 green uh, safe uh, safe area, and uh, in red there is nine. Most of these area are located in the uh, near the near the coast. The second uh, presentation is about uh, the use of geochemical and uh, isotope tracer for the characterization of water leakage in uh, at the Jumin Dam in Tunisia. The Jumin Dam uh, is located uh, in the northwest part of Tunisia. It's about uh, 60 kilometers from uh, uh, capital to city. The watershed uh, of this dam is uh, about 418 square kilometers. And the capacity of the, this dam is about 130 million cubic meters. Uh, since its uh, construction, uh, this uh, dam uh, observed a uh, leakage, big leakage, about 500 uh, liters per second. And uh, this leakage was observed uh, in two drains in uh, downstream. Uh, and uh, uh, after uh, the location of the, the region of the, the leakage, it's located in the, in the reservoir near the uptake tower, uh, 2,000 of ton of meaning uh, residue uh, was, uh, were injected in this sinkhole and uh, for the impermeabilization of uh, the sinkhole and uh, after this, uh, this operation the leakage was uh, lowered down from 500 uh, liters per second to 
120 liter per second. It's a, it's a reduction of 75% of the uh, leakage or the flow leakage. Uh, the decrease of the flow rate was also accompanied by an increase in the salinity of the drain D2. Here we have uh, the evolution of the salinity and the water level in the dam. This is the date of the, the construction of the dam. The, the salinity of the uh, of in D2 was uh, approximately uh, 1,000 milligram per liter. And just after the impermeabilization of the of the sinkhole, this salinity was uh, increased to be about 2.5 uh, gram per, per liter. And uh, initially, uh, this high salinity was interpreted as a risk uh, uh, for the dam because uh, the water authority thought that uh, this high salinity it's uh, the it's due to the dissolution of material uh, used for the construction of the dam. The geologic map of the Jumin Dam uh, show that uh, we have two pillars integrated in the Cretaceous limestone based on this triazic uh, formation, uh, very uh, salty, and uh, we will see what is the role played by this uh, uh, triazic formation. In the Jumin Dam, uh, the water level and the, the temperature and the electroconductivity were measured in the 60 piezometer located downstream uh, for the control of the of the leakage, but also for the control of the gradient uh, line of water in the dike. And also, water samples were uh, taken for uh, geochemical and isotope. Uh, measurement for the determination and uh, the origin of the pathway of leak. Also, uh, two tracer, chemical tracer, rhodamine and fluorescein, were used for the estimation in the, of, of the leakage in this dam to take corrective action and also to minimize losses and reduce the risk of the stability of the dam. Here we have a, a, a photo of the, the upstream and the downstream. The, the uptake tower is located in this place, so the sinkhole was located here. And uh, uh, in the downstream, we have 60 piezometer located uh, for the control of the, of the leakage. The piezometric map in Jumin Dam uh, give uh, valuable information on the local groundwater flow and hydraulic connection uh, in, the, in, the, in the dam with the surrounding area. The leakage emerging in uh, the drain D1 and uh, the drain uh, D2 are related to the infiltration from the optic, uh, from the optic uh, tower, uh, uh, opening near the optic tower where the sinkhole was found. And the row shows the preferential ways of the of the leakage uh, escaping from the reservoir. <coughs> the distribution map of the electric conductivity show a similar uh, conti uh, electric conductivity in, uh, uh, in water from the, the drain one and uh, the water from this reservoir. It's approximately 0 0.7 millisiemens per centimeter for uh, this water. It's, however, this water is very uh, different than the conductivity, electric conductivity in drain D2, uh, which uh, were measured to be 2.34 millisiemens uh, per centimeter. Uh, initially, as I said before, it was not clear if this high salinity is due to the dissolution of material used for the construction of the dam, or it's the consequence of the groundwater discharging from the underlying geosic formation located in this part. The geochemical tracer show that uh, the second hypothesis was the valid uh, one. The map of the temperature uh, gives uh, uh, nice information because the uh, temperature